I want to go back, though, to 2001. You're a young, young man interning for Herm Edwards. And then the next year, I get fired at Tampa, and you end up at Tampa Bay in the National Football League. You work with some iconic people. Tell me what you learned from some of those guys and if you still use it today. Coach, it was, um, it was kind of bittersweet when you got fired, you know, because you're our hero when it comes to coaching and what you've done for all of us and the belief in all those things. It was really cool. But I got the call from, from her and said, <clears throat> hey, Coach, um, Coach is going to Indy, and he's, um, he's not allowed to take his defense staff. They got a QC job open. He's taking Allen with him. Uh, I think we should interview for the job. I go, that, that, that sounds great, Herm. They go, I'll go about that business. He goes, I'll call Monty. Give, give you a call. The late, great Monty Kiffin. Yeah. I get a call a, a little bit later, and it's Monty Kiffin on the phone, and he tells me he's going to fly me down, and he, and he brings me down, and I'm in a hotel right at the bottom of Shula's, and he comes and picks me up, and, and I, interview with, I interview with Monty, and right in that same room is Rod Marinelli, legendary D-line coach, Joe Barry, you had just hired as a young linebacker coach. Mike Tomlin, you had just hired as a young secondary coach that took over for Herm. Lovey had gone on and went to Chicago. We had all been down there visiting you at some point in your time in Tampa. So it felt like we all owed you something anyway. And we all was trying to learn the defense and the style that you played in and being fast and physical and playing with that no excuse, no explanation type mentality. And it was, um, it was one of those things where when you got down there, you can almost feel the ghost of everybody that you had bought in that building, that you had been around, the essence was still there, the ball, smelling the jet fumes where we practice. It was awesome. And being around those guys and learning how to play football and having development, a tackle and plan and talking about the legendary Tampa two and the shoot awareness and the reroutes and telling all the stories that, that you had given all the people and how you would walk down the drills and you would see Mike Tomlin doing reroutes and you would look at him and say, if we get hands on these guys this week, we're going to have a good chance to win this game. And looking at Mike Tomlin go through these reroute drills with me and teach it to me and talking to Rod about the rush and moving down the field and what two minute looks like and everybody picking on, bringing up stories of you, bringing up things of, I remember you had all the guys in the room and you were talking about it. And we talked about Tampa two and they talked about getting a, a dropper out to take away the check down. And you said the check down in two minutes, we want him to throw that. Let's rush him. And that developed our four-man rush and like all of your stories that you had given to us over the years and the thoughts and the dreams and all the stuff that we talked about in football was all brought up and was all brought back full circle to some of the thoughts and conversations that everybody had with you. And being with those guys for us and for me as a young guy, it was like being at the Harvard of, of coaching. It was, like, it was like one of those deals where you can't not learn football at the highest level being there with all the guys that you had hired, all the guys that you had coached, and really competing every single day at a high level. And which of those fundamental things from that great group of coaches has, has stuck with you over the years? You know, it was signs all over the building. And I know you put most of them there, but... I only had one that mattered. What is a loaf? <laughs> <laughs> what is a loaf probably yeah. stuck with me the most. Yeah. And how we would look at that sign every single year and try to add to it or take off something that didn't matter. So Chasing I, the color. I can't expect to see any loafers out there Sunday night. Huh? Running to the football. <laughs> it, it was all the details. And the biggest one that you put in all of us is no explanations, no excuses. And it, it was just all over the building. And you couldn't, you couldn't get away from it. You were coaching a whole other team. <laughs> And we, we took all those premises, and it was all over the players that you had left us, too. Now, Warren Sapp was still there. Derek Brooks was still there. Shelton Quarles, you know, the secondary, Dwight Smith. Uh, wow. All the guys, Rondé Barber, you know, you know, Brian Kelly, and John Lynch, and all of the guys who had lived that creed and over the last couple of years being with you, they were in the building, and it meant something. And you felt a sense of urgency every single Wednesday when those guys got back into the building to make sure that presentation felt different, but it felt unique. And it felt, for us, it felt like we had to carry the weight of that defense with us. And, and, and we loved it. In Rod's word, we learned to love to be miserable. <laughs> I've heard that before. 
Well, how does this 2024 Falcons team kind of emulate that? You know, we got Jimmy Lake and we got a bunch of guys who you probably even missed that got a chance to come and be a part of Tampa too and got a chance to be a part of that. And we've all spun off and learned different defenses and started where you, I mean, I went back to where you started, the Pittsburgh defense, and I got a chance to work in that. I went and got a chance to work with Vic Vangio's defense that was brought to the Rams by Staley and able to take some of those words. But when it all comes back to it, at the end of the day, it was really, when you go back, it's all about the hustle and it's all yeah. about the tackling. That's it. It's all about the That's shoot it. awareness. It really wasn't what the name yeah. of the defense was. Or what the coverage, what the X's and O's, it's how you, you play. You really realize none of that mattered. Yeah. And for us, we kind of branched off to this fast, free, and physical defense. And you wanted to be player friendly and you wanted to be player led because that's what we learned from you. Whether that was the words or how you said it, that's just what happened. And I can see Derek Brooks right now, every day, taking the same notes on cover two and yeah. going A to C to yeah. D <laughs> and asking the same yeah. question every Wednesday install, do we have a pirate on this yeah. week? No pirate this week, yeah. Derek, we're gonna play straight. Okay, okay. <laughs> and going through the process. So yeah. I think more than anything, it's the process that we took from the system. It's the process that we took and how we wanna go about our business when you're talking about shoot awareness and getting people on the ground. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.